Oh hey guys, uh, I've been wanting to do an updated Serge Lutens fragrance video for a while now. I just never got around to it, but better late than never, right? But recently I found out that Serge Lutens no longer distributes fragrances in the USA. So what does that mean to you guys? So this video is going to be about that topic, but I thought Together I'll combine an updated list of Serge Lutens fragrances. And I've got 13 fragrances in my collection from the House of Serge Lutens. Plus at the end of the video I'm also going to talk about some of the discontinued fragrances. I've got four, but there's a couple of technicalities of, with a few of them and I'll let you know about that. But either way, I'm going to let you know what that means to you if Serge Lutens doesn't distribute fragrances here in the USA and the uh, updated list of uh, fragrances from Serge Lutens all ranked coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, uh, I recently found out that Serge Lutens no longer distributes fragrances in the USA, which is kind of a sad thing, but I can see why they would. And I'm going to get into the details of that. Plus, as I said, uh, the last time I did a video on Serge Lutens fragrances, uh, a, a top five, I believe I did, maybe a top ten, but um, it was probably a good four years ago. So I'm updating the list. I've got new fragrances. They've also done some bottle changes and things like that, which I'll get into a little bit. But before I get to all of that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So what does it mean to you if you are in the USA in regards to Serge Lutens no longer distributing fragrances here. So basically what it means is you will not be able to go to an actual retail establishment to buy any fragrances because no retailers will be selling Serge Lutens. Why is that? I don't really know the reasons why um, Serge Lutens is distributed by Shiseido and I guess Shiseido has decided that they don't want to sell in retailers here in the USA. So um, CGO Perfumery here in San Francisco sells Serge Lutens. They no longer will be selling in their store. Lucky Scent sells Serge Lutens fragrances. They no longer will be selling them. The only way you're going to be able to buy Serge Lutens fragrances is if you go to the Serge Lutens website, which I don't know if they have a USA website or if it's a website run out of France, but that's where you'll be able to order Serge Lutens fragrances and, uh, you know, um, buy them. Now, I don't also know if uh, eventually fragrances will end up at discounters. Most likely they will. So probably you'll be able to buy fragrances from the discounters, ones that are not selling, that end up at discounters. But again, I don't know for sure if this will be the case. Uh, because there's not a lot of stock in the USA, does that mean they're going to be able to end up at discounters because they're not selling. So this is kind of all up in the air currently, but as of now, there's no distribution of Serge Lutens fragrances in the USA. And I believe uh, recently I was at ZGO Perfumery and that, that's where I found out they no longer have them in, in the store, uh, so they're gone. And I checked Lucky Scent and uh, I kind of confirmed with them as well. Uh, they do have some still listed on their website, but probably once they sell out of stock, they will no longer be selling them retail uh, in their store, which probably most likely definitely means their website as well. I, uh, any retail stores or retailers will not be able to sell. But then again, I think discounters will be able to sell. I just haven't seen something like this. But personally, I think this is because of Barney's and potentially right after Barney's closing, which I believe Serge Lutens was probably one of their biggest retailer after they shut down, like in January of 2020, what happened? COVID, which actually kind of killed businesses and perhaps uh, they thought that this is a, a good way for them to not lose out money, maybe. I don't know what the deal is, but this is kind of sad and depressing. The Serge Lutens brand is one of the first niche fragrance brands uh, that kind of got me into fragrances. Probably Chargui was the one I kept hearing uh, about over and over again when I was watching reviews later 2010s, very early 
no, later 2000s, early 2010s, and kind of like was uh, my introduction to kind of, uh, you know, uh, niche fragrances. So it's sad that they were not going to be distributed here, but still we can go buy them in the in France uh, or any other country, I guess. I don't know what, if it th that means the same thing in Canada or other countries near us here in the USA, but yeah, they're not going to be at any retailers here in the USA. Anyway, again, clarification, I don't know about discounters. Most likely discounters will still have them, but I can't guarantee uh, the technicalities and the behind the scenes with how the discounters work. Where does the extra stock and unsold stock come from? USA or from, you know, international? I don't know. So most likely the discounters will get them, but I can't guarantee. But that's that particular topic. If you're fans of uh, fragrances, uh, from this brand, maybe get yourself backup bottles. The fragrances are not getting discontinued, but then again, I haven't really looked into what is being discontinued and what's not, but the, as a brand, an overall brand, they've gone through so many changes. First, it was the bottle changes. They went from bottles like this, uh, and then they became bottles like this. Um, this is a 50 ml version of the same bottle. And then of course they also added on the 100 ml bottles as well, which is kind of cool. I like the fact that they did 100 ml bottles, uh, but um, they also kind of discontinued some fragrances. They had those bell jar bottles, is that how, what they're called? Uh, the, so they had fragrances in those bottles. Then they launched this particular collection. So they moved some fragrances like Fee, Anagi, this one here, went into this bottle, prices went up, all kinds of stuff was happening with this brand. Uh, things got discontinued, like Jeau de Peau. Does it, is it still available? I think Jeau de Peau might have gone into one of these bottles, but I could completely be wrong. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I first discovered the brand around the 2010s, uh, early or late 2000s, early 2010s. Like uh, I bought my first bottle of Feminine Dubois in a bottle like this um, around 2010. Then it was Shergi after that. But let's go ahead and do the ranked list. And I'm gonna start off with the first one. Uh, it's called Le Participe Passé, this one right here. So this is a very interesting fragrance to me. It's a full of resins and balsams, like overly resinous. And there's some light caramelly touches, a little bit smokiness, and of course there's a little cumin in there, leather, and then of course some pepper touches as well. But for me, the overall experience smells like coffee. It's like a coffee experience, coffee resins, does that ever exist? So I'm putting it here at the bottom at 13. It's not one of my favorites, but I don't hate it, you know? I enjoy some of it, but it doesn't call to me like some of the other fragrances I'm going to talk to you about. Either way, you might be a fan of Le Participe Passé. Again, it's all very resinous and balsamic with caramel, cumin, leather, pepper, but I do get this coffee-like quality. It's like a balsamic coffee. I don't know. Anyway, that's Le Participe Passé at number 13. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is Le de Armois. This one right here. I've got a full review of this one on the channel. It's a very fresh collection of fragrances. This collection is very fresh. And this one focuses on Artemisia, which is kind of like licorice absinthe. So if you like green fragrances but overly fresh, these are kind of like the water collection or the low collection. And I think this is really, really great. It smells great, but it's very, very light. So you liberally spray this kind of stuff. Mostly they credit Artemisia, but there's most likely some citrusy touches. Most likely there's some bergamot or something, light citruses, and some light uh, aromatic touches in addition to the Artemisia. And uh, Artemisia, again, as I said, it's kind of like licorice, absinthe, a star anise, kind of like this kind of a smell, lightly boozy and green as well. So this is uh, Lot d'Armois at number 12. Uh, I do recommend it, but it's ranked low because it's low. Ranked low because it's low. <laughs> so at number 11, uh, Musk's Kublai Khan. So the reason I rank this here is, you know, it's a great fragrance. I really love it, but I, I really enjoyed the original version of it and I and I don't even think this is the original version because it came in a bell jar as well. But this version I liked a little more than this. Um, and I believe this version had come out 
before the regulations. So this might have actually had the authentic musk stuff. I don't know, but I kind of preferred this over this one, even though I think it's a great fragrance. I just think that since there's civet in here, I kind of smell the syntheticness of it. But still, it's a, still a great scent. It's ranked low because I like some of the other ones more. But if you like a sexy musk, kind of like a dirty kind of um, sexual musk, try this one. But this features notes of uh, civet, musk, ambrette, amber, labdanum, rose, caraway, patchouli, vanilla. And they credit caraway, but I think it's more cumin. You do experience the kind of like cumin-y touches in here. A little bit of uh, people say cumin smells like body odor. And I could see why they would add that here because it's got a very kind of, like it smells like sex kind of a thing. Either way, Musk Kublikon, Musk's Kublikon is at number 11. This is a very popular one, but I've ranked it kind of low. Um, I don't know why it ends up low. It's kind of like an afterthought fragrance, but every time I smell it, I kind of like it. So, I, I don't know, maybe it's the name. It's 5 o'clock a gingambra. Uh, so, it, it smells good. It's a great representation for ginger. And I've got one of the... Uh, you know, the older bottles, not one of the new bottles that are like this. Uh, but um, I do like it. It's got tea, candy, ginger, cinnamon, bergamot, woods, honey, amber, pepper, cacao, patchouli, slightly gourmandish. Um, so I feel like this is a ginger tea experience kind of a thing. If you like ginger tea, you know, you know, honeyed kind of ginger tea, because it's got the sweetness and it's got spices in it. Uh, there's some zing in it from the ginger, some spiciness, and of course, it's got that comforting vibe that tea kind of uh, produces in fragrances. I think it's a very cozy fragrance. It's also very fall appropriate kind of warmth. It has this warmth about it because all the notes in here kind of come off warm and it's perfect to, uh, you know, when you're first experiencing the coolness of the, the fall weather, you want kind of like these cozy, uh, warm fragrances. And I think that's what this one does. It's a great spicy ginger focused fragrance. Five o'clock a gingambra at number 10. So at number nine is the first fragrance I bought from Serge Lutens. It's Feminette de Bois, but it's in the current bottle, not in my original bottle that I first bought back in 2010. This is Feminite Dubois. Feminite Dubois to me is a cedar sand, no it's mostly cedar, it's a cedar fragrance with a fruity plum note with some cinnamon and cloves, the zing from ginger, some fruit, more fruitiness from peach, sandalwood, benzoin, musk and vanilla. This actually was a love at first sniff and I really ended up loving the way this smelled because the combination of the cedar with the plums was top notch uh, great. I think there were a few fragrances that uh, also were similar to this like um, Courtier Latin from uh, the house of Memo Paris had a very similar kind of smell to it. It was kind of a Virginia cedar slash plums with spices. But this is actually uh, had multiple forms. It was actually launched as a Shiseido fragrance in the early 90s. Shiseido uh, fragrance, uh, I think... Um, uh, Serge Lutens used to work with Shiseido and that's how it was launched and I think it was brought over to Serge Lutens when he launched his own brand. But I think it's a great scent even though it's got feminine in the name. I think it doesn't scream feminine. Uh, you know, it's cedar and plums with cinnamon and cloves and Memo Paris had something similar and you know, it uh, was unisex targeted. So I think men can totally pull this one off. But as soon as I bought one bottle, I bought it actually in Europe on a trip to Europe. It was actually in Germany when I bought it. And I actually loved it so much. I, I bought a bottle from my mom as well. So we were both wearing this fragrance at the same time. But I, you know, at the time it was only in the 50 ml bottle, but now they have it in the 100. But either way, I think it's a great scent with plums and cedar together. So the cedar kind of comes off dry and woody, and that plum kind of comes off a little uh, juicy, fruity, but more pruney, like a little dried kind of plummy. But the great, great fragrance, Feminine Du Bois at number nine. So this was a toss up between number nine and number eight. Eight. So I ended up putting this one at number eight and I have a full review of this one on the channel. It's Claire de Musk from the house of Serge Lutens. And this one is a simplistic musk, completely diff different than Musk Kublai Khan. This is the dirty bad boy sexual musk. This one's the more fuzzy, warm, uh, kind of like, you know, lightly sexy, but kind of like more gentle, a little more you know, a kind of cozy and a warmer experience, not the naughty one, kind of like the good one, you know? 
when I say good one, as in the, the, the good and bad, uh, bad boy, good boy, good girl, bad girl kind of thing. So this one's actually chock full of musk, iris, neroli, and bergamot. And it's a clean wear. It's a little more subdued. It's, it's a little more of a skin scent, but has a presence, a little presence. And it's got that kind of musky smell that's prominent in something like Kiehl's Original Musk, but a little more of a substance version, even though I still consider it's mostly a skin scent. So it's got powdery touches, but it's really, really a gorgeous musk. Claire de Musk at number eight from the house of Serge Lutens. So at number seven, it is Un Bois Vanille, this one right here. So this is my second bottle. Originally, I had a bottle in the small bottles like this. And this one actually is a kind of a coconutty, woody take on uh, vanilla. It's completely different than other vanilla fragrances. That's kind of why it makes for a kind of a standout experience. Features notes of vanilla, coconut, beeswax, licorice, sandalwood, tonka beans, bitter almonds, guyac wood, and benzoin. So it is a little on the waxy side because of the coconuts and the beeswax together with the vanilla, but you have a little contrast with the, the licorice note there. Some light woods as well come in, but overall, I think it's a great scent. It's a different take on vanilla. It's completely different than your like full on in your face syrupy vanilla fragrances because it's got these unique notes thrown in where you're experiencing vanilla, but that's not all you're experiencing. You're experiencing a lot of other notes together to make for a unique vanilla experience. So if you're tired of vanillas all smelling the same, definitely check out this one. It's Un Bois Vanille, and it has a woody consistency in addition to those very unique notes. As I said, it does come off a little waxy to me. Either way, Un Bois Vanille from the house of Serge Lutens at number seven. So this one's a very popular fragrance, probably one of the reasons uh, I kind of got into reviewing fragrances uh, because it was so popular early on in the early early 2010s and also in the latter part of 2000s uh, when I was first watching videos online. Shergi, uh, a fragrance focusing on tobacco leaf. And you know, it's kind of changed from what I remember originally lightly, but it's a tobacco leaf, honey, amber, hay, incense, sandalwood, iris, musk, and rose. You know, it does have similarities but then kind of comes off a little different to me but still you experience the tobacco leaf with honey and that's a great combination i think this combination is really really solid honey tobacco works well together right uh, of course the amber and hay come in so the hay kind of adds this unique characteristic to the fragrance, kind of um, dry, grassy uh, experience. And of course, uh, it works well with the tobacco leaf note. But then of course, the incense adds that smoke in there with woods and iris and the muskiness and the rose. I think it rounds out to be a great fragrance. And that's why I think it's at number six. But still, I feel like there's something missing from when I first bought this. It, it, it Maybe not so much with the smell, but the oomphiness is kind of gone. But it is also kind of from the smell as well. There's a light difference about this smell. Maybe it was a little more spicier before as well. Either way, check it out and let me know if that's what you've uh, you know experienced with Shergi, but Shergi is at number six. This next one is uh, a unique fragrance focusing on vetiver, but it's called Vetiver Oriental. This is it right here at number five. And I like this. I don't have vetiver fragrances that do this uh, where they combine vetiver, which is a kind of a grassy, earthy, woody smell with, uh, you know, the ambery kind of style notes, uh, warm, kind of lightly gourmand notes. So Vetiver Oriental features notes of vetiver, dark chocolate, amber, oak moss, iris, guyac wood, sandalwood, labdanum, and musk. So if you're the type of person that does not like vetiver, you think it's too grassy, you, you know, it's woody, could be, you know, damp and woody, kind of moldy kind of smelling as well. That's what I hear from people. This actually, you have the vetiver there, but they have so much other stuff on top of it, like the dark chocolate and amber, you do experience it kind of a different way. It's not as grassy, but still woody. Uh, there's earthiness there, but I think it's balanced out with the dark chocolates, you know, uh, chocolatey creaminess. And of course the amber comes in as well with iris and guyac wood. So I think it's a great fragrance. I put it at number five because it was one that I've always wanted to get, but I ended up with a bottle from Barney's when they closed down for a really, really great price. And I think it's a solid release from this house. Again, this ranked list, uh, list, uh, 
is fragrances that I think are still selling. Uh, I'm gonna get to a few fragrances that I think are, well, definitely are no longer selling. But Serge Lutens has so many fragrances and they're putting one in another collection and discontinuing one. And I, I don't know what, what the heck is going on with them. So hopefully all the fragrances that I'm featuring in my rank list are still selling and you can get them. But either way, check out Vetiver Oriental if you don't know it. I think it's a great fragrance from this house. All right, next up at number four, it's De Profundis, this one right here. Is that the correct one? Yes, so, so this one I bought from a friend who was getting rid of their collection early this year. I was like, wow, where have I been with this particular fragrance? This is a fantastic smell, very green and um, kind of a unique floral, you know, green floral take. So Def Profundis uh, is in this collection, but it used to be in the bell jar, like in the, the original bell jars. And uh, they've moved it here, and I think it's a fantastic smell if you like green floral fragrances. This features notes of chrysanthemum, green notes, violet, soil tincture, plum tree, incense, but fantastic. It smells like greenery. Uh, if you've ever planted, uh, you, know, you know, plants and things like that, and you like the smell of plants and soil and the greens that you're kind of like, you know, mowing and all that kind of stuff, chopping up and, you know, gardening, that kind of smell, that's what this smells like. It's a great sm uh, smell. Plus it has a light fruitiness under there, a sweet fruitiness that's contrasted with all the, you know, the chrysanthemum and the green notes, violets and all that good stuff. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance at number four. It's the Profundus. Sadly, it's in their more expensive collection, but I believe those fragrances were originally in the bell jars, so those were already more expensive, so that I would expect them to be expensive fragrances, but then again, they go up in price uh, a lot. So the next one is Fleur d'Oranger at number three, a great orange blossom fragrance. I put it here, it's a sweet one. It's a kind of gelatinous, kind of jelly-like, so you it wears like that as well. Plus it has, like when you're wearing it, there is a little cumin that pops. That has this unique characteristic to the fragrance, a uniqueness that most of the time, it, becomes kind of linear, but then all of a sudden the cumin appears. It's like, where did that come from? I'm really loving it kind of thing, you know? I know a lot of pe a lot of you that might not like cumin, but give this one a try. I think it's a great flor uh, orange blossom Florida Oranger Neroli fragrance experience, but features notes of orange blossom, jasmine, Indian tuberose, citruses, white rose, hibiscus, Neroli, cumin, musk, woods. But again, it's a orange blossom Neroli plus loads of other flowers and you definitely experience it. There is a light tropical touch as well, but beautifully gorgeous, really, really beautiful. A fresh, kind of a, you know, floral, citrus floral fragrance with a little substance. I really love that one. Fleur d'Oranger from the house of the Serge Lutens at number three. We've got two more left, two of my all-time favorites from this house. This number two is the third fragrance I ever bought from this house. It's Ombre Sultan, this one right here. Amazing, amazing amber. Really, really amazing amber. It does kind of remind me of Mitza from uh, Dior. Also reminds me a little bit of Ab Absolute Pour Le Soir from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjen, which I have a comparison video on the channel. If you care to watch it, go catch it. Sadly, Mitza is a little complicated to get. Absolute Pour Le Soir is uh, discontinued, sadly. But this one still is available, I think. As least I think that it is. But Ombre Sultan features resins, amber, bay leaf, myrrh, sandalwood, benzoin, coriander, vanilla, oregano, patchouli, angelica, and myrtle. Boy, man, it's so good. I love this amber because of that bay leaf note. It's a great contrast to the warm, ambery touches. It's dry and syrupy at the same time, so it does get a little powdery, uh, but I love the resins in here and the woods uh, contrasted with the amber and bay leaf. A great, great wear. Uh, one of my favorite fragrances, as I said, and this is the third fragrance I bought from this house, and I, they, it's become like one of my top fragrances. Either way, Ombre Sultan at number two. And my number one favorite fragrance used to be in a regular bottle. It's this one, Fil Anguille. It's a very, very complicated name, which moved into this uh, 
uh, you know, collection. They raised the pr price up on it. So, why do I like this one so much? It's like a, a, a the cold of winter in a pine forest. You're smelling the pine. There's a fire really close by burning from a fireplace. The smoke coming out. You could smell it or fire outside. And you're like chopping up some, you know, fruits, dried fruits to make some kind of like a holiday compote or something. That's what this smells like. It's an amazing, amazing smell. Contrasts really, really beautiful. Pine, incense, dried fruits, balsam fir, spices, bay leaf, and vetiver. One of the best smells ever, 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 ever created. It's fantastic smell. Uh, I really love it. It smells great. It, there is a little bit of a churchy incense in there, but I think uh, I can see that maybe there is a church, you know, uh, there's a church service nearby and you could smell it in the cold, you know, the fiery, uh, smoky incense is kind of escaping nearby. But the combination of the notes are amazing. The fruits, the dried fruits against the pine and the balsam fir and incense fan freaking tastic i love this one this is fila angi at number one absolutely one of the most amazing smells ever 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 i love that one anyway that's my list now let's talk about a couple of other fragrances the one i'm going to talk about is arabi i think arabi is discontinued it could still be selling i don't know but this is all i have left of arabi in its original bottle and I think, I believe this is one of the more original bottles. If you could see the logo down here, this little logo, I think it's a house. That is probably one of the first ones because then they switched it over to the SL right here, as you can see. So they are a little different. This is one of the oldest bottles I have. I think this right here is also, this is a Jeux de Peau in, in the more recent bottle. And then the Fia Angi is also in the new bottle. So this uh, Musk Kubla Khan is probably one of the oldest bottles I have from what I remember. Uh, but, you know, I, I do still own that one in its current uh, version. But Arabi, on the other hand, I know it's, I think it's discontinued. It's a kind of like an apricot -y amber experience, almost like an apricot f um, leather. I don't know if you've ever eaten those, like an apricot fruit roll-up kind of a thing. That's the experience I get with this one, but it's leathery, it's uh, ambery, spicy, and uh, very, very fruity. That's Arabi. And then Jeu de Peau uh, probably was my number four purchase from this um, collection. It was uh, Feminine Dubois, Cher Guy, Ambre Sultan, and Jeu de Peau. Absolute love with this one. It was such a great fragrance. It's milky lactonic, bready as well, like bread note. And then there's a, I think a licorice note in here as well. Such a yummy, yummy fragrance. Sad it's discontinued. It's completely gone. Although it could be wrong. It could be brought back. I don't know. But either way, that is Jeu de Peau. Either way, guys, those are my, uh, collection of fragrances from the house of Serge Lutens. Again, this is what I heard about not uh, Serge Lutens not distributing in the USA anymore. Everything is changing, so I don't know how uh, easy it's going to be to buy these things. I know their website is supposedly going to be selling, no longer available at retailers where you can walk up or order from their website. So I think any purchases in the future will have to be done on Serge Lutens' website. And again, I don't know about discounters. Most likely discounters will get fragrances. But I'm just thinking to myself, it's not going to be as ample as it was at one time because retailers here in the USA are not going to have stock. So old stock will not end up at the discounters if that's how it works. That's how it works. At least that's what I think or how I think it works. I don't know, but this is all the news I have for this collection. Let me know your thoughts on this whole thing of Serge Lutens not distributing in the USA anymore. And also let me know your thoughts on the fragrances I discussed with you today. What are your favorite Serge Lutens fragrances? Do you like this house? Do you hate it? Put some comments down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments, please Please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Bye.